I just finished building my first custom keyboard from scratch, and I want to share what I've learned. There's some amazing tools and services available out there, and this project is way more approachable than you might think. Here's what we're going to be building, a fully custom macro pad from start to finish for under a hundred bucks. The design I'm using here is 15 keys, but you can use these instructions for everything from two keys to a full size layout, or even a 12 by 12 macro pad if you really want it. The only thing you need is access to a soldering iron and basic soldering skills. I'm talking about soldering through hole header pens, nothing fancy at all. If you can solder larger surface mount diodes, you can save yourself a few bucks, but I'm also going to walk you through ordering your PCB pre-assembled. We'll design the plates and case for this keyboard to be 3D printed or laser cut, and if you don't have access to either one of those, I'll walk you through ordering the laser cut acrylic parts from Send Cut Send. I'm serious about this being an approachable project, so we're going to keep the scope pretty simple. We won't be talking about RGB lighting, split keyboards, encoders, screens, or any of the other bells and whistles that can be added to custom keyboards. Since this is a macro pad, we won't deal with stabilizers either, which are essential for spacebar-sized keys. I already mentioned basic soldering skills is the only requirement. Here are a few things you don't need to know in order to build this project. Anything about designing PCBs, building things in CAD, programming, building and flashing firmware, or anything else under the heading of deep wizardry. This is a DIY project for the adventurous newbie. If you aren't convinced yet, pick up a DIY mechanical keyboard kit to learn more about custom keyboards, then come back here once you're ready to forge your own. We're going to learn, together, the very basics of designing a keyboard layout, using KiCad for PCB design, ordering the board from JLC PCB, designing the plates and case for it and on shape, having them laser cut via send cut send, building the vial firmware and loading it to the board. If this sounds like a fun adventure, then you're in the right place. I'm not an expert on any of this, but I have built two keyboards successfully, so I can teach you enough to be dangerous at least. Here's what our bill of materials looks like. A two-layer JLC PCB board about this size runs $26 shipped with no parts on it, or $40 with the diodes pre-assembled. And don't be afraid to try soldering the diodes yourself. These are SOD123 packages, one of the larger surface mount components. I'm terrible at soldering, and I still manage to figure these out. Assuming your board isn't pre-assembled, you'll also need 15 diodes and a reset switch. Send Cut Send is about $20 for laser cut acrylic shipped, or you can 3D print or laser cut plywood or acrylic for the plates and case. We'll go through the design process for each option when we get there. The brains of this operation is a C Picro, a small development board with an RP2040 microcontroller on it. This saves us from designing and soldering the most complex part of the circuit. We just need 0.1 inch header pens to connect the brain to our custom PCB. These boards run about $10 to $12. You'll also need 31 header pens for it. If you have a favorite RP2040 Pro Micro compatible already, use that instead. It'll work fine. Macro pads are a great way to try out different key switches, so we're going to use hot swap key sockets. That way you can plug and unplug key switches at any time. I bought my sockets and CPicro from beekeep.com for $29 shipped. We're using MX style switches, so make sure you get an MX or Kali hot swap socket. Not chalk, not gather on low profile. I wouldn't dare to tell you which key switch is best, so you're on your own there. I have some Gateron Browns left over from my last project, and I ordered XDA and DSA keycaps for them. This is completely up to preference, but expect to pay $15 to $30 for 15 switches and keycaps. Just make sure you're looking at MX-compatible parts. Finally, we'll need some parts to hold it all together. We'll get into the details of these when we talk about the top and bottom plates, but expect to spend $20 on screws, standoffs, spacers, and rubber feet to put it all together. All in, we're looking at under $100, depending on how much you're outsourcing. Links to all of this are in the MacroPad resource page, which is linked in the description.
Let's get right into the fun part using Keyboard Layout Editor. That's keyboard-layout-editor.com, link on the resource page here. Click any key, hit Ctrl A to select all of them, and hit Delete so we get a blank canvas. The Add Key button has a dropdown, so we can add 10 keys, and then 5 more. You can drag a box around the keys you want to move, and use the arrow keys to move them. Obviously I have a specific layout in mind here, but this is a great way to try out different ideas. You can also hold the control key and click to select multiple keys at once. These are the ones I want to have as 2U wide, which I can set here in the width field. This key is overlapping, so we'll move these over to make room for it. Depending on which keycaps you're using, all of these widths are widely available, and any of them could be mounted vertically instead. KLE isn't just a brainstorming tool, by the way. We're going to use this to drive our PCB layout, and thus the physical arrangement of the keys, so take some time to get everything exactly how you want it here. That's a general idea I had in mind. It's a numeric keypad with a couple of chunky buttons on the right for macros. I already know the bottom right one is going to be my mute button in Teams. You don't have to stick to rectangular matrix layouts either. This tool can do almost anything. Other examples are in the preset drop-down menu here, but make sure to save your current layout first. Download the JSON file for the next step, and that wraps up part one. Next time, we'll design the PCB for this macro pad.